fellow humans. My name is Poppy and I finally have a wall to film against. I mean, I still don't have a bed, but it is something. Now, I know I've been gone for quite some time, but that's partially due to the fact that I was recently in the United States for the first time in my life to attend the wedding of my best friend Charlotte. We hadn't seen each other in five years, so it was quite an emotional time. <laughs> now because everything was going to be taking place in Chicago and its surrounding areas, I decided I might as well make the most of that trip and spend a full week in that part of Illinois. And as it was my very first trip to the States, as well as my first solo holiday, I wanted to do it right. So I drew up my very own Chicago style bucket list. I made little doodles for all the attractions and key Chicago and things I knew I had to see or try. And the idea was to colour each one in after I completed it. I also made a more general note to explore, because actually being in a place always gives you more of a sense of what you can do. And as I expected, I ended up seeing a few sites I hadn't planned to. And of course, me being me, I documented absolutely everything I did, so this video is about my whole experience, whether it was originally planned or not. But before I start, I do just want to note that I bought a Go Chicago pass that granted me access to four different attractions, and I would strongly recommend it to anyone who's going to Chicago because I ended up saving about 33% of my total ticket price that I would have spent otherwise. And no, this isn't sponsored. I just think it's a really useful thing to have. Anyway, back to story time. It all began with a trip from Manchester to O'Hare via London Heathrow. And I'm not gonna keep doing that voice, but I did have a dangerously tight connection, so I ended up running all over the place. Fortunately, however, I did make my second flight. And on that flight, I took the time to catch up on a handful of recent films I hadn't seen yet, and decided Tarantino really needs to lay off the gratuitous foot shots. So, two glasses of tomato juice, and an unhealthy dose of voyeurism later, I was in Chicago. Because I was very far from home, and equally unwilling to use my data roaming, I had to do things old school. So every morning, I'd get out my map, circle the places I wanted to see, and plan a route before heading out. And yes, I guess I could have improvised during the day, but let me just remind you I was in Chicago in January, and the temperature was minus 15 degrees Celsius, or 5 degrees Fahrenheit, and I really wasn't in the mood to get stuck somewhere I didn't know, or walk for longer than necessary. But the one site I had to brave the cold for, no matter the circumstances, was of course, the Bean. It's actually physically impossible to be a tourist in Chicago and not end up at Cloudgate. No, really, the winds will draw you there whether you like it or not. Fortunately for me, I very much wanted to see it, so I timed my trip for sundown, I walked through Millennium Park to get there, and I was faced with the big shiny boy. I actually stood looking at it in awe for frankly way too long. I just sort of placed myself at various positions around the bean, taking pictures, staring at it, looking at the sun's reflection in it. It was really quite captivating. So much so that I also bought a piggy bank in the shape of the bean to take home with me. No, seriously. It's so cute! So, that's one down and plenty more to go. As I mentioned, I wanted to see the bean at golden hour. Or I guess blue hour because it was sort of hidden by the buildings, but whatever. So the earlier part of that day was spent at the Art Institute of Chicago. And boy, was that a cool place. From the contemporary wing, to the Renaissance halls, to the ancient pottery, they really did have a bit of everything. And I probably sound a bit like a brochure right now, but I was just very impressed. With pieces by the likes of Van Gogh and Picasso, I saw so many iconic works that it would take me forever to list them all. They even had a few Romanian artists like Van Kush, which was lovely to see. But I have to say, I found myself most starstruck when I entered the room full of Monet paintings. When I was about eight years old, he was my favourite impressionist by far. So to be able to stand there and examine every brush stroke up close was a little overwhelming. And I don't think I expected to be so affected by a painter, because it's not like at a concert where you're, you know, seeing that person performing live and they're only a few metres away from you or whatever, but this was just... I almost, yeah, just felt him there and his past and that was really cool. I also had a lot of fun with the more abstract pieces. I don't know exactly what I was meant to feel when looking at them, but I definitely enjoyed analysing them all. Like, what's her story? 
Now, as you can probably imagine, I ended up spending quite a few hours in that building. And while I could talk about every single piece I saw, I don't think anyone actually wants to hear that in-depth review on artwork that I'm not an expert in anyway. But... No, there is no but. Let's move on to the next thing, shall we? Okay. Laugh all you want, but one of my top priorities was being able to see an American supermarket out in the wild. You just hear so much about them on TV and in films, I really wanted to see what all the fuss was about. So Charlotte took me to a Target near Wheaton. She was disappointed because the popcorn machine was down, but I had a slushie to compensate and that was equally fun. And there's not really any point going into further detail on that particular trip, but it was enjoyable. And I would go to a Target again. Even though I couldn't get my popcorn fix at the Target, there were two dishes I needed to try. Deep dish pizza and Chicago style hot dogs. Yes, I did forget to draw the legendary dog on my list, but I also put a separate note for trying local foods. So I'm gonna say I didn't technically forget it entirely. So I had some vegetarian deep dish at Lumanati's in Naperville and then went to UB Dogs in Chicago for, well, now I am actually going to be doing a separate video on my culinary experience of Chicago, so I'll save all the juicy, I guess, foody, tasty, whatever reviews for that video. But just so you know, I did do the Chicago food stuff. But you know what's definitely not edible? Books. Although having said that, I did know a surprising number of kids in primary school who would eat their notebooks and the pages within them as well. Um, Sorry if you're one of those people, however, I do still think that was a strange thing to do. Anyway, books. Yes, Barnes and Noble. We're gonna add that one to my general explore list because it was another one I wasn't expecting to come across, but I was so glad I did, and I ended up spending hours in there as well. I just had to resist the temptation to buy basically every cool thing that they had, whether it was a book or some kind of merch or something based on the Studio Ghibli films and in order to resist that temptation I spent a lot of time just playing with those things or reading those things until I felt satisfied. I did leave with a few souvenirs and a few gifts for people but I wasn't that bad about it. I think the thing that was the most fun for me was seeing the slight differences in literature between our two native English speaking countries. Like this cookbook by Anthony from Queer Eye. We love to see it. And the other stuff we love to see a bit less, like many, many biographies and texts about a certain president that I will not grace with naming. But this one was pretty funny. So yeah, I just kind of stayed in Barnes and Noble and soaked up the atmosphere for as long as I could. Speaking of atmospheres, it's time to talk about what is now one of my favorite attractions under the ozone, the Adler Planetarium. I got in with my Go Chicago pass and I was actually entitled to two of their shows, so obviously I took advantage of that and went to see them. I went to one about constellations in Chicago's night sky, and then another called Planet Nine, which was about a new discovery and potential additional planet in our solar system, which was obviously very exciting news. It was crazy stuff and the visuals were stunning throughout. Understandably, I wasn't allowed to film during those shows, but just picture yourself in a snow globe that's floating through space and time as centuries roll by in front of you. And someone's explaining everything that's happening as well. Words can't really do justice to how surreal it was. And aside from the shows, I had a lovely time walking through all the exhibits, sending myself a postcard from the Orion Nebula that never actually came, learning about the history of telescopes, and just marvelling at the insanely beautiful displays. I even stood at the centre of the Big Bang. No big deal. The craziest thing is the planetarium wasn't even on my original list of must-sees, but I now insist that if you find yourself in Chicago, you have to go to the planetarium. It is so impressive. Even if you don't go to one of the shows, it's really cool, but they're what make it extra special. But back to things I had actually planned for, Charlotte's bachelorette party took us to 360 Chicago, one of two observation decks in the city. It stands 1,000 feet above the Magnificent Mile in the iconic John Hancock building, and the view was like nothing I'd ever seen before. We took a wobbly lift up to the top and I was immediately blown away. It was actually funny because they originally warned us that there's a lot of fog at the top, so it might not be worth going on that date, 
But when we got there, it was honestly just so enchanting. And I think it added to the whole experience because it felt sort of eerie and mystical. And yes, I know I'm talking about the view from a tall building as if it's some kind of fairy tale forest, but to me, it's about as foreign, so forgive me. And the thing is, it only got better. Flash forward to my final night. I had one attraction left on my pass and I was itching to see the city skyline after dark. I decided to visit Willis Towers Sky Deck. And yes, that is another observation deck, but they're really cool and I wanted to make the most of it. And it's 500 feet taller than the previous one, so I knew it would be even harder to wrap my head around. Once I was at the top, I spent a while looking out at the twinkling lights, taking pictures, obviously, and trying to make out individual cars below us because they were just so small. But eventually I knew it was time. Time to sit on that ledge. I don't have a problem with heights normally, but once I was actually about to put my foot on that piece of glass, I froze for a second. Eventually I was fine, but you know, even for me, it took a lot. <laughs> By the time I took the lift back down, I was still on a bit of an adrenaline high. And when I went to sleep that night, I felt accomplished in all I had seen and achieved over that week. She really did it, boys. She did that tourism thing and she did it alone and she'll do it again. So there you have it, the conclusion to my Chicago Chronicles. Now you might have noticed I never actually got round to the ice skating or theatre, which are two quite big ones. But I did walk past some theatre signs and look at what was going on, and I also watched people ice skate from my position near the beam, so I still sort of witnessed those things happening. I just didn't really want to spend any extra money when I already had those passes, and they weren't immediate priorities. So yeah, I didn't entirely ignore them, I was somewhat tempted. And obviously there are so many more things you can do in Chicago. I just hit those big touristy ones for my first trip there, but I would have loved to have seen Wicker Park, maybe in the summer preferably, or even go to one or two rooftop bars and restaurants. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments because maybe someone else will be looking for things to do in Chicago, or maybe I'll take them on board for my next trip and my next Chicago bucket list. But even if you feel like you can't put anything in the comments, definitely like this video, please subscribe to my channel, and have a lovely day, evening, night, morning, whatever you're having, whenever you're watching. Just be happy. This is going on too long. Why do I keep doing this? Goodbye.